Morning guys, Dr. Pinesett here, and we are live action answering one of your questions today. We're going to talk about criminal records and medical school and what the different charges are, what they mean, and how it's going to affect your chance to get into medical school and how you can overcome any of those and get into medical school still. So let's talk about it today. Welcome, welcome guys. Let's go. But stop making excuses. Stop whining. Stop, right? Get at it. No excuses. Just dominate. What is up, Cheney? Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. We're on here live, and I'm answering one of your guys' questions. If you want me to answer your question, all you have to do is get to my website, studenttransformation.com, leave me a voicemail, and you could be on here. And today, we're answering a student's question about criminal records and how that impacts your medical school admissions. So without further ado, here is the question that was submitted to me, and then I will be giving you guys the answer. Long story short, my, I believe my criminal record is preventing me from getting access to any special master's programs and ways to improve my application for med school. And my current GPA is 3.0, approximately 3.0 for um, non-science, I mean overall, and then for science it's less than that. So obviously I need to improve. Unfortunately, my record, I can't have it sealed until 2024 and I'm not getting any younger. You know, I'm a very non-traditional student. While I don't feel old, I don't really want to wait until 2024 to get started. All right, guys. So that is the question that was submitted to me. Thank you very much uh, for your question submission. I appreciate that. And the very first thing I want to say for you guys in general is that any situation, you can always get into medical school and there is a way, and I will explain how even with the criminal record, you can get into medical school, but the most important thing, if you guys want to be successful in anything you do, particularly getting into medical school, is to understand that getting into medical school requires darn near perfection in the sense that you must be excellent, you must excel, you must be accomplished, you must be a desirable. And when we think about getting a criminal record, that immediately is something, it's a, it's a red flag, it's something that's glaring to medical schools that can make you less than desirable. We have to understand the people you're competing against are that near perfection. And so the very first thing I want to say about this whole topic is you guys need to avoid getting a criminal record, a criminal charge, because it can be disastrous and catastrophic to your medical school chances in getting in. Okay? Please, please, please obey the law. Stick with it. I mean, there's two common scenarios before we get to, to this student's uh, situation. There are two stories that actually I'm, I'm thought, I think of as I, I come to this and two common ways that students accidentally get criminal records slash are not true criminals, but are seen in the eyes of medical schools and other evaluation bodies as real criminals. And the first is parking tickets. Who knew that not paying those pesky college <laughs> parking tickets could result in you getting a criminal charge? Did you guys know that? I mean, I'm surprised I don't have a criminal record. From all the charges that I got, I had so many unpaid tickets at UC Irvine, zot, 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 when I was there. They literally were not going to let me graduate. I was like, listen, guys, I'm graduating with honors. How can you guys let me graduate? And they were like, no, no, no. You can't graduate until you pay your tickets. Well, I'm like, well, how much are they? Well, four years of tickets added up. I owed them several thousands of dollars for tickets before I could graduate. I was fortunate, though, that I actually didn't have those tickets reverted to criminal charges. And for you guys, you have to be watchful of this in that tickets can become criminal charges that inadvertently you ignore that $30 ticket, that $20 parking in the red, and those all of a sudden become charges on your record that medical schools will see as charges. Even though you get them dismissed, you get them taken care of, getting paid for, your negligence, because and this is where it gets tricky, some of these tickets have a failure to appear associated with them, right? Because you have to show up for the ticket or you have to pay the ticket and you essentially, you're avert, getting away from law by not paying them. So that's the first one. The second one is funny because I had a student who was telling me about this when I was, I was at a conference and we were talking about uh, his getting into medical school and I was giving him some advice and one of the things he asked me, he was like, well, listen, let me ask you about this. He goes, freshman year, I was in the dorms. Now I was doing the rules, I was in my room doing my own thing, but a buddy of mine was in a dorm across the way and they were drinking in their dorm their RA and some other people from the campus came in and were basically breaking up the party. So in order to escape that, they jumped out the window, came across like the roofing over to this guy's uh, dorm room. And as they got into the dorm room, <laughs> their RA also busted people on that side. And so he actually was not involved in the party. However, he received 
a academic misconduct action because he was helping his buddy escape from the other party and hiding him in his closet. So for you guys, right, this is the second way to easily pick up a criminal record when you don't need one, and this is called criminal record light is what I'm going to call it, is an academic misconduct. And this is something that students don't think about. The little things you do on your campus, a prank, a protest, those little academic misconducts that seem like nothing, right, you're voicing your opinion or you're helping your drunk friend escape a party, can end up on your actual permanent record. And I know we joke about the permanent record. I joke about it all the time. People say, oh, this is going to go my permanent record. There are certain things that actually are permanent. Criminal records and then also academic misconduct. And it's one of the questions you have to answer in your application. Have you ever received academic misconduct? Have you ever been dismissed from university? Those sorts of questions will come up and those will be major red flags to medical schools. So you want to make sure you take care of those. Kasim, what is up? Michael, what is up? Harpreet, Abdi, what is up? So does that make sense to everybody? Like two little incidental ways you guys might think of that you actually might be on the like verge of becoming a criminal, not even knowing it, your tickets, and then also things you do on your campus that are academic misconducts that don't seem like a big deal, but can be a big deal. And we actually recently in San Diego, we just had a bunch of physicians who were protesting at the border. It was an awesome thing. They were protesting because they're not vaccinating all the orphaned children um, at the border. And so these physicians were like, listen, we have the supplies, we have the manpower, we will do the vaccinations, let us do it. And they were not being allowed to do that, so they made a protest. And at this protest, several of them were arrested, which is not a big deal if you already have your license, but there were several students who were pre-meds who were out there who got arrested as part of this and were cited. And while it may seem like, listen, I'm doing the right thing, when you apply to medical school, they don't see the fine print. All they see is you got arrested and you have an arrest record because you have to check that box. So that's another like, Man, don't fall in that trap. So that all being said, don't get a don't get a record. Be aware of how you can get a record and avoid that. When it comes to criminal charges and it comes to academic misconduct, yes, that is bad and it's a red flag in itself. But there can be mitigating circumstances in terms of what was actually happening, what was the issue, and what it involved, and how medical schools perceive that. So there are four kind of areas that medical schools don't like if you're involved with that sort of crime or that sort of academic misconduct. The first one, right, the most basic is cheating. So if you were involved in cheating on a test uh, or anything like that on a project, if you're involved in cheating as an academic misconduct, that is a major red flag. Because if you were a cheater once, the likelihood, right, like all my men and women out here know, right, when dating, if they were a cheater once, they're gonna cheat again, right? That's how medical schools see that, so you don't want to be labeled as a cheater early on in your process. So avoid cheating and getting caught cheating. It's not worth it. It's one grade. It's better to get the low grade than to cheat and have that on your record. Okay. The second area is fraud. So if your criminal charge involves any sort of fraud, whether it be financial fraud, identity fraud, any kind of fraud, that will be a major, major, major no-no for medical schools. Why? Because as a physician, you have access to all sorts of records, confidential information, and all sorts of sensitive information. So if you are a person who perpetrated a fraud in the past, you have access and the ability to commit major, high-level, impactful frauds as a physician, and they don't want to take on that risk. So fraud will get you in trouble, so don't do that. The other thing is, that's kind of a, I guess another, it should be kind of obvious, is substance abuse and substance distribution. Hear me and hear me now. If you've gotten convicted of a drug charge related to distribution or intent to distribute or anything like that, medical schools are not going to want you. Why? Because as a doctor, you have access to what? Medications, drugs, and other words. So they don't want to be involved in that. Now, if you have been a substance abuser in the past, alcohol, illicit substances, prescription substances being used off prescription. This is kind of a gray area and this is where the strategy comes in. If you guys have one of these convictions, you were a previous drug abuser, you were a previous drug user, you were a previous heavy uh, alcohol consumer and it became a problem for you and derailed your life and you have a charge related to that, DUI, DWI, um, drunk in public, those kind of things. You must be able to explain to medical schools how you've changed, evolved, matured as a person, and why it won't happen again. Does everybody understand what I'm saying here? If you can't articulate effectively to medical schools how you've changed 
from that previous year and you won't relapse under the stress and the pressure that is medical school, they're not going to want you. So you must have said that this is, hey, this is my past. The last time I got arrested for this was five, 10, 15 years ago. I am now a new person. I was a young person. I was 18. I've now matured. I've recognized I don't need these substances. I have a support system around me. I go to rehab. I go to meetings. I have these things in place that keep me on straight and narrow. I have ways to deal with my stress, ways to deal with my adversity that are more productive and aren't that. So we have to show them that change. Okay, so that's very, very important for that. The fourth area that will get you in trouble is violent crimes. So anything involving violence, even, and this is where it comes up again, I think of these, all these scenarios, all these students, I interact with so many students, and I hear these stories, I just want to squeeze you guys, because you guys do so much damage to yourselves, is domestic violence. And we're not going to be, I don't want to, don't start, you know, send me the hate mail, because I'm saying this. But not all domestic violence is the same. However, all domestic violence is viewed the same to medical schools, and it's a non-starter. And the reason I say this is because there have been incidents where students have come to me, and their issue was that they had a disagreement with their boyfriend or girlfriend, and that disagreement was on school grounds, in the dorms, or wherever. And because of that, right, the RA was notified or the local campus security was notified. Then a report was filed with the police. And now you have a domestic violence charge that wasn't really domestic violence, but it was escalated because of where it took place. Even that will be frowned upon by medical school. So do not be violent, I guess is the first thing to say, but be careful about these violent charges because they don't, right? You're supposed to be the, the all giving, caring physician. If you're being out there getting violent charges and charges associated with violence, that's gonna be problematic. The other way this happens is at bars, at clubs, right? Late night outings and you have a little bit too much to drink and someone says something crazy, a punch is thrown, next thing you know, or your buddy throws a punch, you get involved, that's a problem. So violent things, don't get involved in those. Now, with all that being said, is everybody getting what I'm saying right now? The very first thing I want to tell you you need to do if you have a criminal record is work with all of your might to get it expunged. And there are a lot of different categories of this and there's no reason... <laughs> wow anyway uh, <laughs> if you have criminal charges there is you guys should uh, be <laughs> you guys should be working to get it expunged there's a lot of different ways you can get things expunged remove from your records uh, all these different things um, and we won't get into the specifics of all that but I want you guys, it's worth your while to retain an attorney and have an attorney look over your records and see what can be done to either completely expunge or to mitigate the charges against you, right? Either getting them removed from your record, getting the charge changed in the, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, getting them changed in the, uh, in the record, whatever it can be, make sure you guys get that handled. Okay. It's important. It is important. It is important. Okay, so spend the money, get that removed from your record if you can. And the other thing about this is to understand, as was mentioned in the video, that certain charges have expirations. So it might be in your best interest to wait on taking your MCAT and applying until after the charges are expunged. If you guys are in a situation where, like this student who's in this question, you are older and you don't want to wait to apply, you don't want to wait for it to be expunged, you don't want to wait for it to be taken care of, there are options for medical school that won't be as stringent about your criminal record, okay? And these include the Caribbean. And a lot of people say, you know what, uh, Caribbean is bad, and even people accuse me of being someone who is anti-Caribbean. I'm not anti-Caribbean. What I am anti is people who don't respect medical school and themselves enough to say, mm, I'm not ready for medical school. And they go there and they set themselves up to fail. Yes. You guys have to understand this, that you guys, as you approach this, you have to be prepared for wherever you go. And because of the lower standards at Caribbean schools, a lot of people get in who aren't actively prepared to thrive, to survive. Okay. So 
If you're gonna go there, it's a great option, but you have to be ready to thrive at a high level. And the student who sent this is actually one of my students, and I've told her that she actually should be someone who goes to a Caribbean school because she will be actively qualified. She actually just sent me a message. She just got straight A's for this last year, right? And it's the first time ever in her life she's gotten straight A's, but she's one of my five pillars of study lessons to get a better grade students, and now she's able to get those A's. So she's a student who will do well in the Caribbean, who will do well in any school, so she's someone who would be a great candidate to go there. So don't overlook going to the Caribbean, going elsewhere for your medical education just because it's out of the country. You're in a special situation where you want to do that. The last thing I'll say is if you are going to apply with any sort of criminal record, with the DUI, people are mentioning in the box or whatever it is, make sure you understand that you have a major red flag because you are a criminal in medical school's minds. So in order to offset that, what you must do is be darn near perfect in every other aspect of your application. So for the student who submitted this question earlier, what they said is that All right, so <laughs> I'm just reading what's happening in the box here. I love it. <laughs> what these people don't know, and I'll take a side note, and I'll edit this out later, but what these people don't know is that I have a... Tr <laughs> because of my position as a black male and the threats I've received, that I actually know who these people are, and I'll be sending their files over to law enforcement. <laughs> so when you make claims like this, you guys have to be prepared. Again, everything is not empty. Everything is not false hearted. Everything is not just what it is. So I appreciate you guys for saying those comments. And you'll be in touch with some law enforcement soon. I, I appreciate you. <laughs> so understand, as you guys go when you have this criminal record, you're at a distinct disadvantage as you apply. So what you have to do is you have to make sure that everything else in your application is tight, both from an achievement standpoint and what you've done and all your extracurriculars. Also from an academic perspective of, oh, I've done this academically, I've achieved this way. And the third thing you have to do is you have to then be able to take everything you've done and to create a better story than the story that you are a criminal. So you have to be able to tell your story and your progression of how you're going to get there. Does that make sense to everybody? So you've got to be able to take all this stuff and wrap it up and make it into a desirable profile. Yes? Yes, yes. All right. All right, so that's what we got for today, guys. If you guys want your question answered, send me your question, studenttransformation.com, leave a voicemail, and I will answer your guys' question when I'm on here, okay? And uh, while you guys are at it, I hope you guys have a great and happy and productive new year. Spend time with your family, and I will catch you guys later, guys. The website is studenttransformation.com. Get over there, leave me a voicemail, and I hope to talk to you guys soon. Later, y'all. Today is the day, guys. No more excuses, no more complaining. You're going to take your future in your own hands. You're going to dominate. You're going to be successful. Get to my website, studenttransformation.com. I challenge you. What are you going to do today to make your life better?